The most expensive PC fans ever have launched. The PlayStation 5 has sold a lot and Intel isn't as good as they want us to believe. Let's get into the hot news. It's Thursday, December 21st, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about Lee and Lee finally launching their UniFan TL LCD edition fans. These were showed off at Computex where they have a 1.6 inch screen that's 400 by 400 in resolution and can display a whole host of various different things, including GPU temperature, CPU temperature, all that kind of stuff, as well as your ability to upload your own file to display. It likely has to run through Lee and Lee software for you to be able to actually utilize these things, but they are now available for pre-order as of December 20th. And you can see they also have an infinity mirror on the side. And in case you're preparing your wallet to pick some of these up, they cost a cool $46.99 minimum for the 120 millimeter edition and $51.99 for the 140 millimeter edition. And in case you want a triple pack, that's gonna increase the price to a $150. Now you might be wondering, well, that's more expensive than just buying three. Likely there is some sort of hub that you get with this that helps to make up for that extra little bit of price in that triple pack with the controller. So it's very expensive. These are very pricey fans. This actually isn't as bad as I've seen some of Corsair's fans go for, which can get up to this price point without a unique feature like the LCD screen. But uh, let me know if you're gonna consider picking one of these up while I let you know about today's video sponsor. This December, Nexigo is giving back. They're also sponsoring today's video. Through the end of the year, Nexigo is accepting entries for their Nintendo Switch controllers giveaway. Up for grabs are the Nexigo Gripcon Gen 2 with back buttons and RGB lights and the Nexigo Nexigo NS32 wireless controller. Nexigo is accepting entries through December 31st, and with the secret code UFD Tech, you can add five bonus entries. All controllers being given away have a six axis gyroscope for tilt controls and dual vibration motors for an immersive haptic response. For you RGB lovers out there, all controllers have a customizable RGB lights around the thumbsticks. And speaking of thumbsticks, the Gripcon controller specifically features Hall Effect thumbsticks, which use an electromagnetic sensor in place of the physical sensor. This prevents a controller's worst nightmare, stick drift. By using an electromagnetic sensor, Nexigo has made it that all of the dust and gunk that gets into the thumbstick sockets doesn't prevent the sensor from making connection. It's worth noting that the Hall Effect Gripcon is only compatible with the Switch and Switch OLED, while the NS32 is compatible with all versions of the Nintendo Switch, including the Switch Lite and OLED versions. With the Bluetooth connection, the controller is also compatible with Windows, Mac, iPhone, and Android. Go ahead and get your submissions in to win one of these awesome controllers by clicking the link in the description, and don't forget to use secret code UFD tech. Big thanks to Nexigo for sponsoring today's video. In case you were looking to use one of those Nexigo controllers on something like your iPhone to play video games like Death Stranding, you're gonna have to wait a little while longer because it's been announced that 505 Games is not gonna get the Mac port and the iOS port of Death Stranding out until about a month later than was expected. It was supposed to come out this year, but now it will only come out January 31st of 2024. But Vulcan is coming out with a new feature that makes it a lot better for your graphics card to decode and encode H.264 and H.265. This is something that's going to be built in to nearly every GPU that supports Vulkan, which is a whole lot of them, and it's going to make it so that you don't have to depend on third-party libraries with regards to encoding and decoding. So now Vulkan can support H.264 and H.265 as part of its pipeline, and NVIDIA already now officially supports this in some beta drivers, with Intel and AMD allegedly going to support this feature set moving forward sometime soon, which is just good to hear. More support on more software features all around while we support Reese in finding out what the deals are today. Yo, welcome back to Gifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, deals. Starting off today, we have the Logitech Streamcam 1080p 60fps webcam going for only $63.95 renewed, which how bad could a renewed webcam be? It's not like something you handle physically often. But then next up, we have the ASRock Challenger Radeon RX 7700 XT, which is a 12 gig graphics card going for its cheapest price ever, dropping below $400 with the included promo code, making it $399.99. And then lastly, we have the Apple M2 Mac Mini, specifically the eight gig variant for only $479, making it $120 or four. Honestly, one heck of a Photoshop machine. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hard news. Cheers. And it appears Sony has had a really good deal when it comes to the PlayStation 5. They revealed in a blog post yesterday 
that they have sold 50 million units of the PS5, which is roughly on pace with the sales of the PlayStation 4. So it appears to be a massive hit of a console on Sony's hands and that the PlayStation 5 has outsold the Series S and X by roughly three times. Nearly 7.6 million units of Microsoft's console have been sold this year, whereas Sony has sold nearly 22 and a half million PS5s in this year alone. Given that this launched in 2020, that is still mightily impressive. Obviously, we've seen a lot more price drops when it comes to the PlayStation 5. They have been more readily available. You can get a game bundled with the PlayStation 5 at what used to be the MSRP. So things are appearing to go Sony's way and things are going Tesla's way when it comes to the chargers because Volkswagen, Audi, and Porsche have announced that they are going to be switching over to Tesla's charger as well. The NACS chargers are going to be supported by these companies in 2025 and it's already been reported that Tesla will allow Ford's vehicles to come online to their chargers in February of 2024 as soon as the adapters roll out but that essentially means all of the big players in the EV space can now use Tesla's chargers as well as they're going to be using the same port moving forward which means we have a unified standard. This is kind of like if Android adopted the lightning connector. It is impressive to see that this has happened. And speaking of adopting new standards, Risk 5 is an upcoming processor setup that a lot of people want to see adopted and it's actually finding its way over into its first handheld. The first Risk 5 gaming handheld has been announced. It's the Litchi Pocket 4A and it's going to run Risk 5 Debian and be an Android retro game platform. It has four Risk 5 cores running at 2.5 gigahertz and it's going to run an Imagination GPU and it's going to support both Android as well as Debian and have a 7 inch 2880 by 800 display with up to 16 gigs of RAM and up to 128 gigs of storage. It's not the prettiest thing in the world and it's not quite clear how much it's going to cost but it is good to see that handhelds are expanding even further beyond the AMD and Intel setup. I've talked a lot about how I'm very excited for an upcoming Meteor Lake handheld and we see that it's also moving on into Risk V. But when it comes to the hype for Meteor Lake, it turns out that it doesn't perform exactly well when you remove some of the optimizations that have been baked into the operating system like with Windows 11. And that's been found out by Pharonix who has run 300 CPU benchmarks putting the 7840U up against the Ultra 7 155H of essentially comparable CPUs. And it turns out that in 80% of those tests, the AMD processor beat the crap out of the Intel processor. And that Team Red's chip is on average 28% faster than Team Blue's chip. Now this performance difference does go away when you switch over to Windows, but in case you're gonna be looking at Linux, it looks like Team Red is still going to be the go-to. And this is without optimizations for AMD's AI setups. And some of these CPU benchmarks did put the AI parts of the processor to the task. So to see AMD come out with such a definitive win shows a lot of the work that's done by the operating system to get all of the cores and everything that interfaces with ThreadDirector on Intel side working for Microsoft. And when that's removed on Linux, they, they tend to fall apart. Software support just as valuable as hardware support, and your support matters a lot. So let's get into comment response. Enos McGee says, leaking details of Insomniac's roadmap and plans sucks and is what it is, but leaking personal information of their employees is absolutely unacceptable. And I hope those A clowns are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And then we've got Cam saying, I'm incredibly proud of Insomniac for not paying the hackers. The hackers always use those funds to find additional targets. And in this way, Insomniac helped protect others at the cost of their own IP leaking. We need to find ways to reward those facing such ransom demands when they don't cave into them. I agree, uh, Insomniac was obviously facing a lot of pressing issues when it came to their personal information being leaked. It's hard to see how we can prevent this type of stuff moving forward, but likely this happened not due to bad security practices, but also it's just the same way that Linus got hacked. It's social engineering is getting better, the most likely entry point in any given system is going to be the person, not necessarily the security systems. And so nobody's above falling prey to social engineering and, and it's just sucky that it happened. And we got Wolvi saying, complete my first PC build last week. I used a Gigabyte B650 board and a 7600X. Texan said, I just recently upgraded the 7800X 3D and picked up this B650E Tai Chi Lite. And Amp Normal said, picked up the B650 MSI with the 7800X 3D in June 
huge time frame. It does seem like a lot of people, as soon as the 7800X 3D came out, they did switch over to the new generation of AMD chips. It's pretty clear that a lot of people were waiting for that as well as cheaper motherboard prices, considering that B650 was so expensive when it launched. So thank you all for sharing uh, what your AMD switchovers were down below in the comments. So we got Paul CT saying, so is there any benefit to using Beeper before RCS rolls out next year anyways? Is Beeper that much better? Will it get better after RCS rolls out next year? It's not necessarily better. It's just a matter of what you want to use. Being part of iMessage means that things like group text works better when you have a majority Apple user situation. It then makes it so that people can continue to use their native messaging system on Apple versus using something else like Signal or Telegram or WhatsApp, which I saw a lot of people were like, why does anybody care about this when you can use these third party systems with encrypted messaging already? And it's just simply the fact that Americans never really transitioned over to using that kind of stuff. It was always, we had unlimited SMS and then iMessage kind of worked its way to be part of that. And so people just use the messaging app that's baked into their phone and they don't want to download another one. And so Android users who are the tinkerers typically uh, are the ones who have to suffer for that. Then we got Joseph Randall with the $5 super thanks. Thank you for that. I don't know why you did that, but I appreciate that uh, you, you supported the channel in that way. And then I saw a comment, but I can't find it anymore where somebody was like, why didn't you respond to my comment, Brett? I got it in early, why not mine? And if you take a look at how YouTube actually sorts comments, I keep mine at top comments and I do kind of randomly pick them through. I just kind of try to find some that are good for me to discuss, but if you comment early, I'm actually less likely to find it simply because I can either get top comments, which is algorithmically generated, or newest first. There is no way for me to sort by oldest first unless I happen to get an extension, which I haven't done. And then we got one of the newest comments. Where's the Dealmaster shirt? You forget it. I didn't. I actually brought it with me. I forgot to put it on. I have it. So I owe you guys two extra days at the beginning of the new year, but I'm done with this episode of Hot News. I'll be back for more, hopefully tomorrow.